Welcome to the worst of the Raya podcast. This is the Wednesday, January 3rd edition of the show. Today, the return of Would You Rather Wednesday, where we ask the question, would you rather have 2024 be just as good, just as bad as 2023, or do you want to roll the dice, take a chance? Uh, the answers that we got, fairly shocking to me. We also talk about some words that you need to get out of your vocabulary for 2024. The cringeworthy words that we're throwing away into the new year. And also what you'll hear right here at the beginning is uh, a new trend called buddy mooning. You can find out what that is in the podcast. Enjoy. We'll catch you guys soon. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The Worst of the Riot, Radio U. Do yourself a favor and follow The Riot on Instagram at Radio U Riot. Have you ever done this? The new trend? A buddy moon? 8772 Radio U. Is that when you and one of your buddies pull off a mooning? (laughs) No. Have you done that? I've never done that either. Yeah, me neither. Actually, I don't know. Maybe I have. Uh, 8772 <laughs> Radio U. Have you ever done a buddy moon? A buddy moon is a honeymoon. Now, you could be forgiven if you thought, oh, so that's a honeymoon with your buddies. Like, a, basically a bro's trip. No. A honeymoon is, after you get married, it is like a traditional honeymoon, except instead of just the two of you, you do invite all of your friends. And so you go to Aruba or Hawaii or... Tallahassee, wherever you're going, and you bring the whole you bring the whole crew instead of it just being the two newlyweds. An interesting concept that yeah. is. Yeah, a friend vacation for your honeymoon. Yeah. Uh, well, think of it this way: uh, Zoe Burke, wedding planning expert for Hitched, she says, "Let's face it, you have the rest of your life to be just the two of you. So why not max out the rare time?" where you have all your loved ones around you. Got it. Yeah. Hard to argue against that, except, uh, you know, after my loved ones already have to pay for a wedding. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they want a nice vacation out of it, you know? They want to buy me a gift and then go on vacation with me. Yeah. Spend then I choose, time. of course, where we're going. Yeah, that's right. Because it's my big day, but you can also tag. Yeah. And if me and my, <laughs> my newlywed wife want to just, like, Spend it all alone, even though we invited you. That's our choice. And as well, we also get to pick the date. Yes. When, where, and we're not, just to be clear, we're not covering your cost of the vacation. That's on your dime. And the good thing is, is you leave right after the wedding. So not only do you get to travel to my wedding, yeah. because I'm not going to have it in the city that I grew up in, yeah. um, where you live now, I'm going to have it somewhere else. So then you can travel for that. And then right after on that following Monday... Not like a weekend trip. This is a week long trip, so you can use all your vacation days. Yes, you can tag along with year. me uh, for my my uh, honeymoon. We've, uh, I mean, that's a very negative view of it. But uh, could you agree? Would it be nice to have friends along for your honeymoon? This takes a very specific friend group. Yeah, a very you specific couple. A, a very specific couple mm-hmm. to pull this off. Because like my girlfriend and I, like our friends aren't the same. Who, do, who comes? Who, uh, Does she even like my friend's yeah, girlfriend? that's right. Are they oh. coming? Or are the girlfriend's not coming? It's just my friends it, and her friends. You're so right. You could... Because that's you, just a conjoined you bring bachelor your friends, party. And it's one thing to have your friends at the, at, the, at the wedding, in the wedding party. It's another thing for you to bring your friends along for a buddy moon. Uh, maybe your, your new wife, maybe she doesn't like your friends. And forget, yeah, like you said, forget about their girlfriends. Maybe that's not a good, maybe that's just going to make it all awkward. This is a very, it feels like there can't be that many people. I mean, you've got a lot of friends and it doesn't sound like you would do this. I would never do this. There's no chance I would do this. I don't have a lot of friends. I would never do this. When I take a vacation, I want to get away from everybody. We can hang out when I get back. We just hung out the whole weekend. Yeah. This is, this is what, but this said, I know at least uh, some members of my family have done. They, I don't think they brought friends, but they brought, you know, uh, parents would go along. Siblings would go on. Have you been? Honeymoons. No. No, I have not. Smart. 
I yeah. don't want to have to cater to anybody else on my honeymoon. Yeah, it should be about you. It's about you. me. I'm not going to be like, oh, what does the group want to do? No. Yeah, it's your day, your time. That's, uh, you know, I, what does this gal say again? She said, you've got the whole rest of your life to be just the two of you. From my experience, uh, the best time of just the two of you is at first. So enjoy it while you have that <laughs> in, a fun ex- <laughs> in a fun location. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Now, I saw this headline going around a lot yesterday. Did you know that uh, a Minecraft movie is in the works? I did not. I think, no, maybe I have heard of this. I think I have heard about this. Uh, yeah, there, there, it, a Minecraft movie is coming, I believe, from uh, Warner Brothers. And some rumors are starting to swirl, according to Deadline, about who will be starring as Steve in the Minecraft movie. The actor might be Jack Black. Does that seem fitting? Does that seem right? Um, it depends, I suppose, if it's live action or animated. It's got to be animated, right? There's no way it's live action. What I'm, would the costumes look like? Uh, what would he be wearing? A uh, green shirt? Like cardboard. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, a, it's for sure animated. It's probably, it's probably animated. And so therefore, you know, because I don't know that uh, Jack Black looks a lot like Steve from Minecraft. I wouldn't say so. But. Not quite square enough. It, yes, that's true. But it doesn't matter what he looks like. I will watch Jack Black in any movie. And so if he's in, if he's Steve in, in the Minecraft movie, they may have found the one way for me to actually have interest in the Minecraft movie. Well, you got to think he pulled off recently one of the best animated characters as of late. Yeah. When he played Bowser. Exactly. He and nailed it. He did. He killed it. He was like the whole, the, uh, one of the headliners there. I would say that he is the best part of that movie. Has and it's to not be. close. It's not yeah. close. So, uh, yeah, build off of that success. Uh, take that and run with it and granted now if they're making a minecraft movie well there's no if they're making a minecraft movie they're not making it for me they don't have me in mind but they do have all the people that uh went and watched super mario brothers all the people that uh play video games have kids kids grew up playing the game uh and they want to capitalize on that and jack black capitalized on that in super mario brothers so it makes sense stick with what works jack black in a cartoon video game movie, it makes sense. Well, you think about it, too. His animated characters have always hit. Obviously, we think as of late, Bowser. Yeah. But what he's probably most known for, Poe, Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. I mean, how many came Kung Fu Panda movies have they made? And I think they got another one coming, right? I think they do. And then you go back even further, and people don't always think of Jack Black for this character. Another animated character that he pulled off. He has another which, animated character? He does, and you're not gonna, you would have never guessed it. Shark Tale with Will Smith. Oh, yeah. He's Lenny the shark. Right. Like the second main character in the movie who's a fantastic character. So every time he's done any animated character, it's been fire. Yeah. Yet again. Uh, I mean, some might say anytime he does just about anything, it's fire. So looking forward to if this is, if this is true, Jack Black starring in a Minecraft movie, all of a sudden my interest in a Minecraft movie and probably for a lot of other people as well, just uh, peaked a little higher. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. You know, some have dubbed this month as Janu Harry. Well, what's that have to do with anything? Janu Harry. Janu Harry. Uh, you know, some people, there's, there's a lot of different things that, that go on in the month of January, dry January, dry January, some might call it, uh, you know, obviously all the, the resolutions, maybe for some people, the resolution could be for some women, the resolution could be let your body hair grow wild and free. A wild month. January is turning out to be. It sure is. It means different things to different people. But but January, Harry, you can't argue with the name. That's a great, that's good branding. It does rhyme. Good branding for the 
the anti-razor community. Uh, I'm seeing here, like, you know, proponents of January basically saying to women, it's your chance to think about how you treat your body and why. That's the question, right? Now we're asking questions. Not, I mean, if you want to shave or not shave, that's your choice. But the question is, if you do, especially if you've just always shaved since puberty, why? Why are you doing that? Who are you trying to impress? Why do you need to impress them? Why does not having body hair impress them? Should you change your ways? These are the questions that women can now ask themselves in the month of January. Well, you got to think, if there was ever a month that you were going to maybe let your leg hair grow a little more, it makes sense for it to be this one. Yeah. Because you're not wearing shorts. Yeah, unlikely. You're wearing pants. Uh-huh. Pants. Long, long dresses. Um, now, I'm seeing here, though, some of these pictures. Uh, it's not just the legs. I didn't even know that hair grew in these places on anybody. So... What there, photos I mean, are you looking yeah, at? Yeah, this is. Uh, this you must is, have different pictures than me. Uh, this, this is. It's not just the legs, but then the again, unibrow. I'm seeing a unibrow. I photo do see here. the unibrow. Yeah, you consider that? Is that the same thing? What do you mean? Why are you plucking it? I mean, it is a good question. Who it are you a, trying to impress? It is a good question. That is. Uh, I and, you know. Why is it? Why is it that the unibrow is so looked down upon? The unibrow? Yeah. Why do you think that is? It's just not the look, like, you know? We know we know that, that the reason women have been encouraged to shave their bodies is, is going back in time. Like, the, the razor companies needed, wanted to make more money. And so they're like, what if we convince women? They're gullible and dumb. We can Whoa. convince them. To, <laughs> that's what the razor companies are saying. In the, it was a different time. And we just stuck with it. Uh, but who was it that convinced people with unibrows? Was that the razor companies too? Because you don't shave that, right? You pluck it. You pluck. You wax. You could. You could shave. Was it the waxing companies? You can who, wax it as well. Who came up? Do you, you know from it. experience or? Oh, I get them threaded. Yeah. Who came up with? Who came up with that? Well, I think it's just a better look. It's more. Well, how do we accepted. all? How do we all agree on that? Well, then? why do people brush their hair? For the same reason, it looks a little bit better. But that's it's hygiene. More it's hygiene. So what are you talking about? It's hygiene to brushing brush your, your hair. hair. It gets tangled otherwise. I don't brush my hair at all. I never brush my hair. Your hair's Am not I long unhygienic? Enough. It's not long enough. Otherwise, Men brush it, their hair every morning. If you, get, uh, you, you comb it, it looks, it looks like you care. But that's different than a unibrow. It's just a part of your, it's just how your body grows. Yeah, I would say it's just the accepted, just like anything else, why people shave their mustaches. Same deal. Well, that's just, just the personal look. preference. Just yeah. the look that people want. It's a look that you want. If you want a unibrow, some people have a unibrow. And guess what? That's their look. Yeah. Not for me, though. The name, is, name a famous person with a unibrow. Anthony Davis. Yeah. Well other known than for him. the brow. Other than him and Bert. He's well known for that brow. There's something. There's, he's uh, made a lot of money off of it, too. Yeah, because he's the only one. Disinformation, mispronunciations, bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. Your thoughts on today's question at 8772 Radio U. This is one of those questions that uh, the right answer, more so than, than many other times, just depends on your own experience. Today's Would You Rather question is Would you rather that you're 2024? is exactly as good or as bad as your 2023? Or would you roll the dice and have an equal chance that it could be better or worse, but it definitely won't be the same? You signing up for another year of 2023, would you? Or would you take a little gamble on 2024 being better or worse, but it definitely won't be the same? This is a tough one. Because yeah. if you had a if you had a great 2023, then you're looking at even better. What could be better? Yeah. Than the year you just had, or possibly worse. Obviously, that's the downfall. Would you rather take the good year again? Yeah. Would you rather take the average year again, knowing you could maybe have a great year, but then again, do you risk the horrible year? 
And then if you had a bad 2023, you're like, oh my gosh, I have to pick possibly being better. Mm -hmm. But then again, if it's worse. Yeah, you got an equal chance of it being worse. So the, the uh, man, it's tough. It's all, it's all the math. You got to think about the math of it all. Um, I think this, the question is not as interesting if you're just like, I had a great 2023. Why would you not sign up for the run same? Run it back. Yeah, run it back. But if for, for most people, you probably would say you had an average 2023. You want to sign up for average again, or you want a 50-50 shot that it's way better. But I think as well, even if you had a great 2023, mm-hmm. you got to look at this year ahead, your situation, mm-hmm. what might be coming. Let's say you're getting, maybe you're getting married this year. Maybe you're having, maybe your mm. wife's pregnant. You're going to have a child this mm-hmm. year. And so you would think in your mind, it's got to be better, right? Yeah. There's no way you can have the same. And so I think you got to roll the dice. Maybe Eight. you roll the dice if it's supposed to be a great year. 877-2-RADIO-U. Let us know your thoughts on today's Would You Rather question for Would You Rather Wednesday. Would you rather your 2024 is exactly as good or as bad as your 2023 or... Would you rather have an equal chance that it could be better or worse, but definitely won't be the same? Let us know your thoughts. We'll see what people are saying next. There's never been a can of worms they didn't open. The Riot Radio U. The votes, the thoughts are coming in. Philip didn't say whether his 2023 was good or bad, but he did say he's definitely rolling the dice. We got a risk rolling taker. The dice. I we love it. Got a risk taker. Uh, Lisa says she would roll the dice as well. Rolling the dice. She said 2023 had high highs and low lows, but hopeful for an even better year this year. So that's her strategy. Jaden, um, responding to your thoughts of what if you have like a wedding or, you know, a child on the way here in 2024, you got to take average is what you said. Because you don't want to mess that up, right? Uh, or you you got to take the risk because like the odds are that's going to be better, right? But th- that's not how this game works. Mm-hmm. Jaden says, if your next year has something important like a wedding or a child, you might want to repeat it because you don't want to risk a bad wedding or child birth mm-hmm. or something like that. You know? That's smart. That's good thinking. Yeah, I think that's wise. I think that locks you in. If you got something big, you got to lock in uh, your average year. Uh, let's see. Rich. Rich has got to roll those dice on 2024. <laughs> Can't sit and wait for the same. The spice of life, my friends. Spice of life, baby. Yeah, I like it, Rich. Rich wants to spice it up. And uh, Joy says, every year has been really good and really bad in it for me. It seems like when things get super horrible, God sends something really great to help me hold on. So I definitely would Roll the dice because uh, that's kind of what, kind of what having faith is all about. I like that joy. Yeah, I like that's a good outlook. Rolling the dice. <laughs> it sounds like you're a, a dice roller as well. Bethany rolling the dice. I had some major losses this year, but let's turn it around this year. Have an even better year. Make it a better year. Nobody's talking about make it having worse. I know. There's a 50-50 shot. That's that was the rules of the game. You got a 50-50 shot. Whereas you could just lock in that uh, the other choice, locking in that you got an equal year to last year is the other option. So what are you doing? Are you rolling the dice? Are you going with the crowd? Or are you going to stay true? Well, I think, I think this is the answer is largely dependent on how you would rate your previous year. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, Cause again, I think if you had a great year last year, why would you not choose the same thing? I think the answer is clear. Uh, but if you had an average or subpar 2023, it makes it a lot more complicated for me. I would say I had an average 2023. I definitely wouldn't rate it a great year, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Solid Some, year. Solid year. Good things happened. So what do you got for us? So I'm locking that back in. You're not going to roll the dice with I'm us? I'm not going to roll the dice. Roll I don't want a 50, 50 shot that my year is worse. <laughs> Average year. That's a, that's a wild take. Lock it in. Just an average 2024. I'm rolling the dice. <laughs> Send me some great things on my way. I'm hoping for a big year. I mean, it could go badly. It could be go horribly uh-huh. wrong. But then we'll just bounce back in 2025. That's my plan as but of you, now. You see, I've go got, big. 
you, Bethany, Joy, Rich, Lisa, actually, wait, nobody, uh, nobody that we've at least acknowledged here has said they're locking in the same year, except maybe Jaden here. Uh, 50% of you are going to have horrible years. We're flipping the, we're rolling the dice. <laughs> yeah. It won't be me. I mean, there's a, a good amount here. We got Bethany, Joy, Rich. That means about 50, 50 shots. Yeah. So half, half of us are going to have a bad year. Sorry, Bethany, Rich, and Lisa. And Isaiah, you just... Uh, We're splitting here. The odds are, odds are you're 2024. Not going to go well. Or it's going to go great. Yeah. I'm ready for a great year. I'm rolling the dice. Roll them with me. 8772 Radio U. Chime in on your thoughts for today's Would You Rather Wednesday. Would you rather lock in an equal year to 2023 for you? Or would you rather roll the dice? You got a 50-50 shot. Better, worse, but definitely won't be the same. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. What Wendy's is testing out, their new saucy nuggets. This isn't something you can get everywhere. This is at select test locations. They are offering saucy nuggets. Some of them happen to be near us. So we're going to get those and uh, let you know what we think. So watch along on the Radio U Riot Facebook page and YouTube channel later today around uh, lunchtime. Now, talking of restaurants, this is something, uh, if you've worked in fast food, if you've worked in a restaurant before, chime in on this at 8772-RADIO-U. You ever make your own recipes, make your own food in the restaurant kitchen? Because there's a TikTok going around that has some people questioning. It's a gal at uh, Popeye's, and she's teaching, like she's doing a TikTok showing a recipe she makes, and she's like, I'm making this with Popeye's ingredients, in the Popeye's kitchen. It's not on the Popeye's menu, and it's just for me. Don't do this if you work at Popeye's, or else you might get fired, but I'm doing it. I like her style. Yeah. And so I didn't know, like, would that be a shock to you, Isaiah? You never worked in food service. Would it be a shock to you if you knew that, like, fast food employees are back there whipping up their own food uh, off-menu stuff that they're just coming up with on their own for themselves? It, It seems fair to me. I think if you have time, yeah, maybe it's a slow day. I knew my my roommate worked at Burger King, uh huh, and they he would always talk about how they made they would make certain foods there, but they were always on the menu. Like one of my coveted things that used to be served at at Burger King that's no longer around is uh-huh. them, those mac and Cheetos. Uh-huh. Yeah, the. Uh, the spicy mac and Cheetos, uh, and they said they would make those nonstop and just eat them the whole time back there. Yeah. And so I imagine that people did this all the time at fast food restaurants. But I didn't think making your own recipes, that's a little bit creative. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Mark chimed in. He says, well, how else would you come up with new food ideas? But this is like, we're talking Popeyes. This isn't like a chef, you know, just messing around at whatever, you know, like a real restaurant. This is Popeyes. Everything is pre, I mean, half of the stuff is frozen. It's predetermined. Um, and this is just random employees. They're not going to, they're not going to go to corporate and be like, Hey, you I never know. With, I can't with these mashed potato balls. You want to add them to the menu? I guess they could. Uh, but this gal, she's saying, telling people not to, not to do this. Cause she's worried they'll get fired, which then like, why are you posting it? You know, this I'm looking for the clout. Yeah. Um, what about you at Panera? I mean, I, you've worked at a myriad of restaurants. Yeah. And I was going to say, I, this could be surprising to people, I guess, but this is, I don't say it's common, but people would, because you get, the thing is too, if you work at a restaurant and you, you take advantage of like the discount or whatever, uh, or you just, you know, sneak food off, it, you're going to get tired of eating the stuff that's off the menu, like, like ordering off the menu. And so we had a lot of us that would just make our own, just completely design our own sandwiches at Panera from like the ground up. Yeah. So you're Using saying the stuff that was already there though. You're telling me Panera, hope you're listening that you use company ingredients. Yeah. To make your own food on the side. Well, I mostly paid for it. Usually paid for it. Really? Yeah. With, well, the, with the employee discount. Yeah. Not nearly as fun. It's not really scandalous. Not nearly as fun. But I also know that managers would like, they on would. the clock. Uh, Yes. <laughs> On slower days, yeah. Jeez, and they promoted you. Uh-huh. Jeez. They didn't promote me. 
Hudson is the maple syrup, and Isaiah is the power protein flapjack. This is The Riot on Radio U. When you go out to a restaurant, how likely are you to share uh, a, an entree or even an appetizer with somebody? I like to share. You're a big sharer, huh? I like to share. A recent report found that 21% of diners admit that they split an entree to lower the price of a meal. That's just over the last six months. Um, but here's the thing. Everything's getting more expensive, right? And that includes the food that restaurants are trying to serve. Restaurants don't like it nowadays when we split menu items. They don't like it if you order one appetizer for everybody to share. And so they're trying to crack down on it. But they can't just ban that, right? That would be a crazy thing to do. To come in, oh, we'll just take one order of onion rings. You can't. No, sorry, sir. You can't do that. That would be crazy. That would be impossible. So covertly... Restaurants, sit-down restaurants, are trying different tactics, apparently, to try to crack down on our practice of sharing menu items. So here's what they're doing, according to industry experts. One, they're trying, they are reducing the portion sizes that come with stuff that they might even, they might even put it on the menu as shareable, but they reduce the portion size so that you really wind up unsatisfied and, and need to order more uh, for the whole table. Or the other thing, of course, is just straight up raising the prices to the point where uh, they're getting much more bang for their buck. If you think you think you can order it and share it with the whole table, where you're paying a big premium on that. Doesn't seem right to me. I mean, it's a business. You got to do what you got to do, right? But it's worked for so long. Yeah. And what's crazy is in... In days gone by, up until fairly recently, they would encourage you. They'd have whole sections on their menu that are like shareables, you know? They call them shareables. They call them shareables at some places. Yeah. The share platters, whatever you want to call uh-huh, them. Uh-huh, the platters. Those are an MVP for a lot of people. But uh, because then that's one order and everybody's happy. But not the restaurant. Not anymore. The restaurant not happy because they, they haven't been, they're not able to... M- make enough money off of you only ordering three dishes for two people. They really want you. If you want an appetizer, you got to order four dishes for four people or they got to make more money off of you. This is tough. But the good thing is, is you can just avoid it all in general. Just avoid it. By doing what? You can still share. Yeah, but you, are you like this though? I hate, I know going out to a restaurant, you're already spending more money than you would if you just ate at home. We all accept that. Yes. But I hate having the knowledge that I'm not only spending more than I should, but then like I'm actually in a sense getting screwed over by really not getting enough bang for my buck at a restaurant. I hate that. Well, you think then you just don't order appetizers. You avoid the appetizers, order entree only. But they taste so good. I know they do. I know they do. But unfortunately... It's a no-go. I feel like I've just, reading this and then sharing it with everybody, ruined so many people's dining experience because now you're not going to stop going out. But what you, and this is this is January too. This is when a lot of people cut back anyways. And now I'm just reminding you that a couple times you might go out that you're getting screwed. I but, would love a list of these, of these restaurants that are actually yeah. putting this into action. I mean, I think it's just probably most of them. You think all of them? Guilty by association. Because I yeah. haven't seen, I haven't noticed a decrease in the app in the appetizers, a decrease in size yet. Yeah, it hasn't caught up to you. Maybe somebody, if you, if there is a place, let's mm-hmm. go ahead and just air it out. I'd love to get a list of them when we can start airing them out as places that we have crossed off for all of Radio U to go. Sorry that I just had to had to be a downer there to to pull the wool off of everyone's eyes there. It's Don't ne- worry, y'all. It's, it's it's not it's not as bad as it seems. You don't always have to agree with Isaiah to always disagree with Hudson. The Riot. Radio U. You have uh, either like a stuffy or like a blanket from when you were growing up or something like that. that you a still, stuffy? Yeah, you still have now a stuffed animal. Did you, ever, did you hang on to any of those? I do not have any blankets, stuffed animals, anything like that. You haven't hung on to any of your little childhood little mementos. No, but... I did keep my pup Jim. Uh-huh. The blanket 
that the place that I got him from. They yeah. gave they gave him to me. I actually I cradled him in my own arms, my little boy. <laughs> they handed him to me, and he was where he was wrapped up in this little blanket. Yeah, that I got to take home with myself and Jim, and I still have that blanket, and he still sleeps on it. Uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna guess that if if somebody offered you, or you know what, if you show that to anybody, nobody would be like, "Can I have that blanket?" It's mangled. There's yeah. holes. All throughout it. Not if you showed it to me, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it for free. Probably. No, you wouldn't even want it. Yeah, and everybody has something like that. Uh, you know, for me, maybe it's. Uh, I don't have any of my childhood stuff either. I know. I know for a lot of people though, you hold on to. Uh, you know anybody that holds on to the, a blanket that they got when they were growing up? My roommate. Exactly. I, I knew his blanket. I knew it. Uh, uh, and a lot of people hang on to some stuffed animal. For me. Like, what is an item like that? I probably have, like, some coffee mugs. Coffee mugs that are, like, you know, to if I were to show it to you, you'd be like, I don't care about that coffee mug. But to me, I wouldn't give up that coffee. I, if it breaks, I'll be very upset. Maybe one of your crappy hats? That's right. Yeah. One of my, like, but this is my hat. One of my hats. Yeah. Or all of them that I would not trade for the world. I've... I've shed tears over hats before mm -hmm. that I've people lost. love their hats um and yeah we've all got stuff like that or you know you think about your christmas presents there's probably stuff lying around your house worthless to most people but if you it was either give up the christmas gift you just got like the best gift or give up this thing that again most people would say is crap but not to you you're taking you're giving up the christmas gift you're keeping that crap that's crap to most people but to you it means something we all have stuff like that and I want to let, I mean, you know how you feel about it. I want to let you know that's how God feels about you. That to many, I'm not saying that, uh, that you're crap, that you're garbage, that you're worthless, but you might feel that way. The other people might tell you, you should feel that way because of what you've done, because of who you are, whatever. There may be that aspect, but to God, he sees he, you are his treasure. The, the saying one man's trash is another man's treasure. Even if you're not feeling great about yourself, even if you feel like other people don't view you as treasure, to God, you are. To Jesus, he sees you that way. He values you that way, and he wouldn't give you up for anything. Jesus wants to be a part of your life. He sees you like that. He's not seeing all the things that make you supposedly worthless, that make you supposedly not valuable. He sees the things that he loves about you. Jesus wants to come into your life and make a difference and be a part of it. And all you need to do is ask. If you want to know more, check out RadioU.com slash free gift. Do yourself a favor and follow The Riot on Instagram at RadioU Riot. Lake Superior State University. They've become well known. Every year they put out a list of banned words that you're supposed to stop saying into the new year. So I've got their list right here. You ready to cut some of these from your vernacular? Let's here. get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. Number one. Hack. You can't say hack anymore. Hack. Hack topic. Yeah. Um, just, and they say in multiple contexts. So whether you're calling somebody a hack or whether you're calling us a hack, you shouldn't do that. It's banned. You're not allowed. We aren't hacks. Uh, or whether you're talking about a life hack or whatever. Uh, Lake Superior State says no more. You good with that one? That's fine. We can get rid of hack. Uh, impact. You know, that seems kind of crazy. It says, especially as a verb, why use this word when we have a perfectly good word that makes more sense? Effect. You want to know why? Why? Because I don't know which effect is which, so I don't know if I'm supposed to put an A mm. or an E. And so whenever I am going to use effect, I have to just switch it to impact because yeah. I don't know which one to use. But when I'm speaking, I can use effect. It's going to have a big, a big impact on your vocabulary. If I'm writing, if you... I have to put impact. Yeah. Over... Affect. It's with an A, by the way. Affect. I would always use the E. Yeah, me too. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, this is not a word. It's a phrase. At the end of the day. Well, at the end of the day, the show's just cooking along. Yeah. I don't know if we can get rid of that one. I like at the end of the day. I do. I know it's a cliche. It's very, it's particularly very, very businessy. If he doesn't, it feel very businessy. The end of the day. Yeah. Uh, their quote We're is, keeping that one. It's often employed as a rhetorical device that attempts to uh, encapsulate the complexities of a situation summarily, lacking nuance and depth. Who wrote that? You have too big of a vocabulary. Shut up. Just say at the end of the day. Uh, this one's big. Riz. 
Getting rid of Riz. Yeah. It's over. It had, mo- it had its moment. Who do you think hates Riz more? Old people that don't get it or young people that think that it's now getting too widespread? Got to be old people. You think? They hate it. They just don't understand it. Yeah, because I, would, I wouldn't like any word if I didn't know exactly what it meant either. And someone was using it constantly. Their quote here, with language doing the cha-cha of change, we're wondering if this word still rocks the charisma scene or if it's time for a language remix. Who's writing these headlines? I don't Next. know. Lake Superior State. Uh, slay. They don't want you to say slay anymore. Slay did have its moment. It's over. I'm over that slay is, as that well. That feels a little older than. So slay. Over um, iconic. I'm good with iconic. Like, I'm good with continuing on. I don't think that... Is that so overused? Who or? used Iconic so much, you know? Who yeah. overused Iconic so much in 2023 that we can't use it anymore? Uh, somebody describing the show. Our Cring- show? Yeah. Cringeworthy. Cringeworthy is banned. That is overused. That, people say that a lot. Okay. Um, obsessed. I'm obsessed, yeah. Yeah. Overused. Next. Side hustle. Nobody has any of those anyway. I wish we could replace that with something else, but uh, it would have to be full-time paying jobs that pay enough, and there's not enough of those, seemingly. And uh, wait for it. Why are we getting rid rid of wait for it? If we're watching the video, then we're already waiting for it, right? I do hate that. I don't hate saying it. I hate hate when a TikTok or something comes up, and it's like, wait for the end. No, if I have to wait for the end, that means the beginning is uninteresting and you should cut it out. You have a video editor right there. But sometimes you need the beginning to explain the end. No, no. If you have to tell me to wait for it, then it takes too long. The worst is when you're showing someone a video and you know it's crappy until the end and you have to say, wait for the end. Yeah. And then the person's just standing, like you're showing the person they're sitting there uninterested. And then you're staring at them kind of with a little smirk. You're like, you like it? Fast forward. Use the fast forward. Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com.